Hi folks, Lou here, and uh, what I'm going to talk about today is not directly related to games, but is certainly related to war games, because I've noticed, not surprisingly, that there's a trend in warfare in making the distances at which you act longer and longer, and making it less likely that you see your enemy closely or see them at all. Now, we can go back to distant times where warfare was sort of mano on mano. It was melee. You saw the person who was trying to kill you, and you saw the person you were trying to kill. Then we get formations such as the phalanx. Uh, but still, the enemy is not very far away. It's different, but not that different. Now, there were missile weapons like slings, the kind of sling where you sling a stone, not the uh, Y-shaped slingshots that our moderns use. And there were bows, self-bows, but they were pretty poor bows. And what happens in movies from this time on, or movies about this time on, is they tend to exaggerate how important missile weapons were. Missile weapons did not win battles. Missile weapons were more a uh, annoyance to the other side. At sea, you had boarding. And in fact, a sea battle was much like a land battle. Yes, there were missile weapons, but again, it was bows and they weren't worth a whole lot in the overall determination of who won. And then we had ramming, which was quite different, but still ramming is very much a melee thing. And you can see your opponents on the other ship as you ram it or as you get rammed. Catapults and ballistae, which I use as categories for the two ways you can cast uh, missiles using the torsion of ropes, were not very effective. It was hard to hit anything. And so they didn't play much of a part. Or again, they didn't play an effective part. On land, we come back to cataphracts, that is, armored horsemen. And they were generally at the end of a spear or a lance. So that increased the distance somewhat. It wasn't quite close melee, but it was still a case where you saw your enemy. And the enemy was fairly close by. Step dwellers, on the other hand, adopted uh, composite bows. And a composite bow was much more effective than the typical self bows that people had used up to that time. And so uh, the range could become 100 yards or perhaps even a little farther. In sieges, as techniques got better, you often see longer range weapons, again with quote unquote artillery and archery. But it's still the case that you could see the enemy out there. He was just uh, maybe 50 yards or 100 yards away or even farther rather than right in front of your face. Crossbows, when they were developed, were easier to use than self bows, and they were better than many self bows, although perhaps not as good as a, the English longbow. Um, the English longbow certainly uh, increased the speed of shooting, but unless you had a large quantity of ammunition, which is to say arrows, it only had so much of an effect. But there was a time, uh, Battle of Creasy and so on, when missiles were the dominant uh, determination of who won a battle. Now, somewhere along here, trebuchets were invented, which did not use torsion, but used weights and they were more effective missile weapons and again had a longer range. And so again, we see the range getting longer and longer as we go along. Then of course we have the rise of gunpowder, artillery, and later of handguns getting more and more range all the time. Then we have the musket preceded by the arquebus and then the rifle and melee became rare. You might read about battles where there were bayonet charges, but as I understand it, usually before the bayonets actually met, 
one side or the other would quit. In other words, would run away. So the actual occurrence of fighting with bayonets hand to hand was fairly rare. When we get to the age of Napoleon and, and before, artillery becomes more and more important. And of course, Napoleon was an artillery man in training and he, artillery became the queen of battle if it hadn't been already. Now, as we go along, well, going back to the sea, artillery, gunpowder artillery becomes the main component of battle. Although at the time of the Spanish Armada, 1588, the Spanish still supposed that they would win by boarding. Although the English knew that would be a bad idea to let the Spanish board and so they used their artillery. But in later times, then artillery was the main weapon. Although you could still have boarding in a, a, a battle between fleets. Boarding was very minor. It was artillery. You'd blast the other ship, knock down all the masts, and render it unable to resist, practically speaking, without boarding it. Boarding would occur only after it had surrendered. Well, so we get to the Gatling gun and the machine gun in the late 19th century. And in World War I, we get artillery barrages, which were uh, applications of very large amounts of artillery in concentrated form, more perhaps than you would have seen in a Napoleonic battle, uh, and more effective too. Because in Napoleonic battles, remember, they were not using shells, they were using solid shot or grape shot, something like that. But by World War I, they were using explosive shells. And artillery does most of its damage at a distance from where the shell actually lands. Uh, depending on the size of the shot, up to 50 meters away, you can still be wounded by splinters and so on. This is why trenches are particularly useful because you get below where the uh, splinters are going to go. Yes, if you're in a trench and the artillery hits the trench directly, you can still be quite dead, but the trenches save you from the splinters. In World War II, we still saw artillery as the what was most likely to cause damage, but then we had air power as well, bombs and machine guns and so on from the air. And at this point, in case I, you haven't noticed, you don't see the enemy at all. You see a machine or you just see the results of the enemy shooting the artillery. But we move up to today, thinking of the Ukraine war, and we have long range missiles. We have unmanned drones, sea drones, air drones. You never see even a hint of a human enemy. You just see the machine. Now, I think you could write a history of warfare from this perspective. And certainly the big change in warfare, perhaps the biggest of all, was from melee fighting to firepower. That is firing at a distance at a, more than a few hundred yards. And that made a huge difference in how warfare was conducted. Perhaps someone has already written uh, some a book like this because it's inherent in the history of weapons. Anyway, as a war game designer, you could think that you prefer one or another particular era uh, because warfare is quite different depending on the range of weapons and the effect power of weapons. Thanks for listening.